This is Hannibal here from the HannibalTV.com with a daily wrestling news update. NXT did a 0.19 rating this week. Piers, their storyline with Samoa Joe and Karrion Cross is getting over. I did watch the highlights from that, so glad to see they're doing better. Matt Hardy tweeted about the birth of his first daughter. He said, quote, I love my wife, Rebby Hardy. She's given me four beautiful children in six years. End quote. Now, Rebby Hardy used to manage John Moxley. There was always rumors that they were a couple, but no one ever really confirmed that. So congratulations to them. Matt Hardy is going to be part of the Battleground Championship Wrestling event, by the way, September the 18th at the ECW Arena. And another match recently announced for that is Brian Cage against Buddy Murphy. And, of course, Raven is bringing a mystery disciple, I guess, to face Nunzio. It's going to be a huge card, and the Hannibal TV is going to be there covering it. In some other news, as we look at his mug shot here, Michael Elgin, whose real Michael Elgin rather, whose real name is Aaron Frobel, formerly of Ring of Honor and New Japan, was arrested June 29th for violation of a protective order. The order was filed on May 21st by his ex fiance who said she left home due to safety reasons on April 21st after allegedly being, quote, abused physically, mentally, verbally, and emotionally, end quote. She went on to say, quote, I had a plan to leave a few times before, but always backed out from fear. Since I left, I've received hundreds of phone calls, hundreds of text messages, numerous videos and suicide threats from him. He has also reached out to friends and family. Whenever I or someone he has reached out to block him, he uses the free text calling apps to make fake numbers and continues calling and texting, sometimes saying it's him, sometimes pretending to be other people. I've asked him not to contact me numerous times since I've been in a relationship with the respondent. I have suffered sexual, mental emotional and verbal abuse from him, including punishment for saying no to sex, verbally berating her in public, berating her physically in private, isolating from friends and family, monitoring phone and computers to see if she is complying with him, extreme control, sexual catering, pressure to engage in sex acts she expressed not wanting to do, exposing her sexual health by seeing male and female sex workers during their relationship, insulting and shaming her in, in intimidation. So that's what she was quoted as saying. And she goes on to go into more detail. Quote, I recently found out he had been texting me our entire relationship from different fake numbers, pretending to be people from my past, saying nasty things about me. I believe this was used along with many other tactics of control and manipulation to break me down and keep me under his control. I respect everyone's sexuality, but it should be noted that men and women are people he goes after, not just women. This warning is for everyone, not just women. He used threats of suicide many times after I left. A couple of the girls have reached out to me since I left and told me the same story as his ex-wife Rachel can tell you as well. He continues to threaten suicide as a manipulation tactic, end quote. 
So some pretty heavy stuff. I know in Canada, it's much harder to get protection orders than in the U.S. You actually have to go to court over it. But I had a situation once with an obsessive person where I had to deal with um, craziness, such as some of the stuff in there, multiple fake numbers and accounts and so forth, and harassing friends and family. So I, I know what that can be like to deal with. So that, that's just... That's a shame. Uh, I can say I'd, I've never liked Michael Elgin. I always found him to be extremely arrogant in the brief encounters I had with him. And I, I remember his handshake. He's one of these people that just go, well, hello, nice to meet you. And just does the old dangling of the hand, which to me is like you meet someone, you don't have to break their hand, but like it's a sign of disrespect to me if you're just going to be like, hello. So I don't like him. I know Johnny Devine uh, roughed him up really bad in a match once uh, as well. MRF tips me 1999. Thank you very much, MRF. He says, RIP Mr. Wonderful Paul Orndorff. He was the best opponent of Hulk Hogan and their match at the big event in 1986 in Toronto was the best match ever in MRF's opinion. Well, thank you for the 1999 tip. By the way, the doctor of style himself, Slick, has confirmed that he is doing an interview with me live at 11 a.m. Eastern tomorrow. Who is that girl with the orange hair? She's an NXT performer. That was taken from the NXT highlights that I skimmed through before doing this. John Chavez, what's happening from Southern California? Well, we finally get off lockdown on Friday here in Ontario, but I am very much looking forward to returning to California, which I don't even think I can tell you what month it's going to be in yet, but the event is happening this fall, PCW Ultra in LA and I'm looking forward to being there covering it for the Hannibal TV. Happy Wednesday from this guy. Every day is the same to me. I work every day. AC says, what the F Michael Elgin? He's a weirdo. Never respected him before. Don't respect him now. Giant Art Productions says, Elgin seems to disappear ever since Impact let him go. I do remember that. Uh, they let him go for sending dick pics to people. And again, he used the, the suicide for that. Um, people will use, <laughs> have, they'll use that they have mental health problems to get out of anything. Why don't you just say you were drunk and you sent a dick pic? Uh, people have done that ever since picture cell phones have been invented. So, I mean, it's something that you could just admit to doing and or go into porn and embrace it, put out a porn video. Uh, Bryce says, F Michael Elgin. Well, I think, as, as this other guy says, his career's been over for a long time now. This is just more dirt on the grave. Robert doesn't expect the Karrion Cross versus Samoa Joe Angle to last long. By the way, I did interview Karrion Cross at PCW Ultra just about a month before he started with WWE. And I do like him. Who was making those claims is Elgin, his girlfriend or fiance. He was married before and apparently that didn't last. Chris Robinson believes Big Mike is a, an abuser and a control freak and a stalker. I, he's not that tall. He's not that tall for sure. Wendell, uh, I don't know where the Forest of Fear is. He actually, back when he was in Ring of Honor, I did offer to wrestle him 
uh, in Great North Wrestling. I was still wrestling at this point. It was before I was retired. It was probably around 2014. And he never messaged me back because at that time, um, I figured, why not? He had some buzz around him at that time. And I do a hard-hitting style when I used to wrestle. So I thought it could have been an interesting match. Murd thinks that whole thing is awful. Yeah, it sounds terrible. Kayfabe says Michael Elgin will be deported if convicted back to Oshawa, work in the car wash. Yeah, um, who knows? I don't know. I, I know he married a woman who was American. This is the first we're hearing that he's bisexual from these accusations. I never heard he was bisexual before, but uh, this person's alleging he's bisexual. Um, I don't know how the deportation works because if he was married, I don't know what his American status is. Um, so I don't know if he's able to work in the U.S. I imagine he is. But yeah, if he gets sent back to Canada, he might, he might be. I don't, I don't see why he would stay in the States if he doesn't have a work visa. Who knows? I guess we'll find out, but I don't really care. It just seems like a terrible situation because, as I said, I've, I've dealt with, with people that are wacko before, and it's not fun. Andre hopes all is well, or Andre, Eugene saying hello. Mike says Elgin violated a protection order and harassed his girlfriend, fiance. It's not mischief. They divorced in 2020. It was about that time he started seeing another woman who the police report was about. It sounds like, uh, yeah, you do have, it sounds like he does have mental health issues but a very dangerous kind, judging by this. Winter says uh, the guy was very overrated. I agree. Alain says, let's hope he doesn't turn into another Chris Benoit. Malik, can't wait for the slick interview. Robert brings up he was uh, let go at the same time as Joey Ryan. Well, maybe Elgin and, and Joey Ryan can, can have a little dick grabbing match together somewhere amongst themselves and, and the remaining fans that those two have left can watch. Mike, what do I honestly think has been the best shoot interview I've ever done? That's a real tough question. One of my favorite interviews I've done, and it's a UFO related one, and that was with Paul Hellyer. Uh, who is a former National Defense Minister of Canada. And I'm more interested in UFOs than wrestling. And he was the highest ranking government official to come out about them. And I worked on getting that interview for literally two and a half years. So I was so happy to get it. And that whole, there was a whole period where I had had a really successful event a night or two before it was a great North wrestling 10th anniversary event. We had over a thousand people. Then I wrestled uh, Tom law. I, by the way, I beat West Briscoe on the great North wrestling event. Then I wrestled Tom Lawler for a different company the night before the Paul Hellier interview in Montreal. I enjoyed that match. And then I really enjoyed my day when I, which I drove all night, made it to Toronto for 7 a.m which is when that Paul Hellier interview was. And I had a good day for the rest of the day, that Paul Hellier day, which I'm not going to get into publicly, but it was just one of my favorite weekends of my life. But just such an accomplishment when you work on an interview for two and a half years and you finally get it. Sammy says you can have a green card revoked if you're convicted of certain crimes. Andrew, have I heard the Coast to Coast show that talks about UFOs? I've heard some things. 
from it, yes. Billy, it depends what Hall of Fame you're talking about, because in my opinion, none of the Hall of Fames really actually mean anything. They're all very political. If you're talking about the WWE Hall of Fame, there's plenty. I heard in, a, in an interview with Slick where he mentioned why was he not in before Teddy Long. Like, I agree, he should have been in before Teddy Long. Sugar Shane O'Malley interview. I don't. I don't see why not. I'd like to do more MMA interviews as time goes on. Who are the top five wrestlers I would have liked to work with? Uh, well, even though I did practice with the Undertaker, was I would say I would rather love to have had a match with the Undertaker, Bruiser Brody, Ric Flair, Macho Man. And The Rock. Those are the top five that come to mind. Am I interviewing any former mafizo by any chance? Uh, you probably yes. Roberto Bravo, thank you for the four ninety nine tip. Billy Edwards, I agree with you. Bam Bam Bigelow should be in the Hall of Fame. By the way, I am going to be interviewing Josh Barnett soon. I actually talked to him today. Jake, I have interviewed Selena De La Renta. Search it up on here. There's tons of her content on this channel. And I hear she's going to WWE. So congratulations to her. Have a great night. See everyone at 11 a.m. tomorrow for the Slick interview, if you, if you have the chance to catch it live. Thank you for watching the Hannibal TV. Please like this video if you enjoyed it, and click the subscribe button to not miss any of our latest shoot interviews, match videos, or news updates.